Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and I'm now answering question number five from the October November 2007 Mechanics M1 paper from Cambridge 9709 um, syllabus. This is paper four, question number five, which is also the same as question number four from my end of topic worksheet on statics for my Cambridge Mechanics collection from M1. And this question here is about a ring of mass four kilograms which is threaded on a fixed vertical rod a light string is attached to the ring and is pulled with a force of t newtons at an angle of 60 degrees to the downward vertical as shown in the diagram the ring is in equilibrium we have to or we're told that the normal and frictional components of the contact force on the ring by the rod are r newtons and f newtons respectively find r and f in terms of t so first of all a few points to consider here we have a ring which is threaded on the on the on the rod so a ring is something which is basically um it's got like a hole inside it and it can fit okay and slide along a rod okay so like this you can go up and down in this rod right it's free to move up and down okay now it's a fixed rough vertical rod now it's a rough the the rod is rough okay which means if it's rough that means friction is going to act so there's going to be a frictional force acting here uh, which will try to prevent the motion taking place if there's any motion going to take place a light string so again some important points here a light string is attached to the ring light meaning that we ignore its weight and in that case, what it means also is that all of the tension all the way through the string is equal. The tension here and the tension there, all the way through, the tension is the same. And it's pulled with a force of magnitude T newtons acting at an angle of 60 degrees to the downward vertical. The ring is in equilibrium. So all the forces acting on it are balanced out. Okay, so the upward and downward forces, the horizontal vertical forces, everything is balanced out. So the normal and frictional components of the contact force exerted on the ring by the rod are r newtons and f newtons re respectively so now we have to find r and f in terms of t so now i'm going to do is i'm going to take this um, diagram down here which i already have done and i'm going to put the forces acting on it so you have the forces acting on it which are its weight okay the weight acts vertically downwards and its weight is four g newtons four g newtons so you have four g newtons acting down you also have um, the frictional force acting on it which is going to act vertically upwards okay which is we call it f newtons as they told us to call it and then you have the reaction force acting on it now the reaction force um, is always perpendicular to the surface that are in contact so it's perpendicular to this vertical rod so it could either be in this direction or it can be in that direction now it makes sense for it to be pointing to the left here why because it's in equilibrium and their forces have to balance out so if it's in this direction it will only add to the tension and it won't be in equilibrium so it has to be in the direction pointing to the left so that's the the the, 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 the direction of the reaction force so that it's in, in equilibrium all right so now what we're going to do here is we're going to have to resolve these forces the tension um, horizontally and vertically so i'm going to use this color to show the tension resolved horizontally and vertically okay so the dotted line is not a new force but it's the component of this tension force horizontally and vertically so horizontally we can say this is t times and we're going away from the angle so we use sine t times sine 60 it's like you're looking for the the opposite um you know the 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 side which is opposite this angle because it's like you're making a triangle like this and we're looking for this side this is going to be t this is going to be what we're looking for we can say sine 60 equals x over t so x is equal to t sine 60. the easier way of thinking about it actually is if you want to resolve the force which uh, in a direction which is going away from the angle given then we use sine in the direction of the angle given we use cosine so on this side it's going to be t times cosine 60. It's going away from the angle you can think of it we're finding the adjacent side okay so cosine 60. so now if we resolve the forces horizontally and vertically let's let's start with um vertically so vertically we have 
F equals, and we're going to have the T, they're going to have the weight, which is 4G, plus T times cosine of 60. Now, the cosine of 60 is equal to a half, so F is equal to 4G plus T over 2. And I'm going to just make it a bit easier, um, put it as one fraction, because it might be easier for our calculations. So if I make this one fraction, this is like 8 over 2, so it'll be 8G plus T over 2. This is like 4G plus T over 2, same thing, but it's just a bit more um, kind of like, I don't know, a bit easier to deal with if we're going to use it for calculations later on, which we probably will. Then we're going to resolve the forces horizontally. Horizontally, the only forces that are we're dealing with is the tension and the reaction. So we take T times sine 60 is equal to R. So therefore, we can say R is equal to T times sine 60. Now, sine 60 is equal to root 3 over 2. So T times root 3 over 2, and that's R. So those are our answers for part 1, F and R in terms of T. Okay, in terms of T means T must be in the answer. Now, for part 2, it says find the coefficient of friction between the rod and the ring, or they told us that the coefficient of friction between the rod and the ring is 0 0.7. Find the value of T for which the ring is about to slip. Now, the important word here is about to slip. The ring is about to slip, meaning that if the force of tension acts is, is increased any more than in what it's going to be do, um, acting, then this thing will not be in equilibrium anymore. It's in the limit of equilibrium, which means what's happened is the frictional force is now become F max, the maximum force that friction can be can have, all right, in a situation. So friction, as you know, when you have something that is being pulled, frictional force will always equal the pulling force to keep this thing um, in equilibrium right so if you increase the if this becomes five newtons this becomes five newtons six newtons six newtons ten newtons ten newtons it always matches the force that's pulling okay but in this case what's going to happen is this frictional has reached its maximum value it can't go any more than that that means it's not going to be in equilibrium anymore at the point where it's just about to slip just about to slide the friction reaches its maximum possible value and F max is equal to mu times R, mu R. Now mu R is the value of F max. Now we know what mu is. Mu is 0 0.7. And R, we told, we're told, is T times root 3 over 2. Okay, so that's F max. Okay, and so if we know that that's equal to mu R, I can now say, I can use this equation here, F equals 8G plus T over 2. So that means F max is equal to 8G plus T over 2. So 0 0.7 times T root 3 over 2 is equal to 8G plus T over 2. If you multiply both sides by 2, okay, these will cancel out. So we're left with 0 0.7. Um, times t times root 3 equals 8g plus t. And we can bring the t's on the same side. We have 0 0.7 times root 3 times t. I just wrote like this. Minus t equals 8g. So we can take t as a common factor. So you have 0 0.7 times root 3 minus 1 equals 8g. So therefore, t is equal to 8g divided by t times 0 0.7 times root 3 minus 1, not times t, sorry, forget the t. Okay, so that will give us the answer for our tension, which is what we have to find. So we're going to take this calculator and we're going to put 8 times 10 over 0 0.7 times, whoops, 8 times 10 over, let me do that again, sorry, 8 times 10 because g is 10 divided by 0 0.7 times root 3 and then we're going to have minus 1 and that gives us 376.584 376.584 so the tension is going to be 377 newtons to 3 sf and there we have our answer to this question and that concludes this question all right about rings um, and statics. So 
hopefully you understood that fine. And if you want to see other questions from this particular paper, I will collect them together in the playlist that will appear in this region over here. Other questions from this end of topic worksheet on statics will appear in the playlist over here. Uh, you can watch statics questions in general from my channel in the question in the playlist that will appear over here. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.